Hello beautiful people of the world and welcome to a new PD tutorial. In this video we're going to talk about MIDI and specifically we're going to see how to use an external MIDI controller to control our patches. In this tutorial we're going to talk about control messages and in the next one we're going to talk about MIDI nodes. So let's get started. The first thing to do is to create a new patch and then we create a new object and we write in it CTLIN, which stays for control in. If we right click on it, we can have access to the help file. And in the help file, we see that we have a lot of MIDI objects in PD to work with. We have the note in object to receive MIDI notes. We have pitch band, program change, and a lot of other objects. Of course, we have objects also to send MIDI messages out of PD to our hardware synthesizers and drum machines, but we're going to talk about this in another video. So for now, we're just gonna focus on control messages, control change messages to be specific. And as we know, help files are PD patches that we can unlock and we can copy and paste objects from them into our patches. So let's unlock the patch and we select all the objects connected to the control in object. We copy and we paste in our patch. Now we can get rid of this. Okay, so as we can see, we have three different values. We have the value of the control change, so the actual MIDI number. And we have the controller number, so which control change number is specifically sent from each and every uh, physical control in our controller. So, for instance, you know, potentiometers, sliders, buttons, and so on. And then, of course, we have the MIDI port, but we're not going to talk about this. But before we can use all of these objects in our patches, we have to set up our MIDI controller. So, if you don't have already hooked up your controller via USB port, please quit PD, then hook up your controller, and then relaunch PD. Now you can go to the media menu and in the input devices, you can choose your controller from the list that appears. My controller is the Launch Control XL. So I select it, save all settings, and we're good to go. Now, if I move a potentiometer on my controller, we should receive MIDI messages into our PD patch. And as we can see, we have controller number 13, now 14 and the MIDI messages. The channel port is nine, but it really doesn't matter at the moment. And the controller number is the unique identifier for each and every physical control on our controller. And of course the values are just the, uh, you know, the MIDI values from zero to 127 that we're receiving from our controller. So for instance, if I move a slider into my controller, I receive the controller number 77, which means that the first slider on the launch control XL is associated with the control number 77. So if I want to receive MIDI messages only from that specific slider, I can use a controlling object with 77 as a creation argument, like this. So if I hook up a number box, as I move the first slider, I receive the MIDI messages. If we copy and paste this object and we change the creation argument to 78, which is the second slider, as you can see, as I move the second slider, I'm receiving MIDI messages only from the control in 78 object. And of course, if I move the first slider, I receive MIDI messages only on the other object. So this is actually a good way to isolate MIDI messages coming from different potentiometers and sliders on our physical controller. Now let's make a practical example. So we want to control the frequency of an oscillator with one slider and the amplitude of our oscillator with another uh, slider. So the first one is gonna be for the frequency and the second one is gonna be for the volume. Now, of course, the range number is 0, 127 for the MIDI messages, but we have to scale these numbers to a different range. 
So I create my oscillator and a multiplier object, control the amplitude, the volume, and then I'm just copying and pasting something to write the audio file that I need to record the signal from the PD patch. Okay, so now we can go on and see how we can scale the MIDI numbers range to a different range. So we're going to use the exp object. So we create a variable, and then we need to divide the numbers 0, 127 by 127 because we're going to scale this range into 0, 1 range number. Let's use some parentheses. Then we have to multiply by a maximum range, so let's say 6,000. And we have to sum uh, an, an offset for the lowest frequency. So 6,000 is going to be 6,000 Hz, and plus 100 because we're going to have uh, a range from 100 Hz up to 6,100 Hz for the frequency. So now as we move the first slider, we receive values from 0 to 127 from the slider, and with this little operation, we have scaled that range of numbers into a suitable range of number to control the frequency of the oscillator. Now for the volume, it's going to be quite simple, because we just have to divide the 0, 127 range numbers by 127 because we need a range of numbers that goes from 0 to 1. So we just need to divide by 127. Now, as you can see, we move the slider and from 0 to 127, and we have from 0 to 1. Now we can use a pack object and a line object to avoid clicks for the amplitude of our oscillator. And let's see if this works. Okay, so now we can use another pack object and line object to avoid steps in the frequency change. Let's try with 10 milliseconds. Nope, still we have steps. Let's try 100 milliseconds. And it's better. Okay, so this is a very simple example, of course, and it's kind of boring from a musical point of view. But I hope that this was helpful to get started with implementing and starting to use your physical MIDI controllers with your PD patches. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like the video, comment if you have questions, you can write them down into the comment section here, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!